This video is brought to you by Daslane. So I was thinking of doing an origin video on a transformer and while in the process of constructing it I came to one funny conclusion. Not all robots in the Bay films are capable of having an origin video and that's simply because there's not really much to write home about and this issue is usually remedied by the extensive lore of the tie-in comics. If you didn't get much screen time or dialogue from a transformer in the movies we could get more of them in the comics but this particular character has nothing going for him and that's the disposable afterthought better known as Jolt. Now I've been thinking of a lot of ideas regarding Jolt because he's arguably the most underutilized Transformer in the Bay films. There's just no other way to put it. If you ask anybody about him they just go, oh that one guy that helped Optimus fuse with Jetfire? Yeah I remember him, kinda. And I always wonder why Michael Bay would even bother creating a character just to serve a minute role such as that. I mean yeah we've had many throwaway characters who've been used as cannon fodder and you have those token characters that are used to move the plot forward. But what exactly was his reason for introducing Jolt? Judging upon his appearance and name you'd think he'd be one of the coolest characters ever. He was originally created as a quote unquote laser rod, a new group of transformer modes who were included in the generation 2 toy line. They transformed into classic hot rods and their selling point was their flaming energized swords. Ironically enough Jolt didn't start off as an Autobot, he was actually created as the next wave of Decepticon warriors. Now as we all know the G2 era went down as fast as it was introduced and most of the concepts were either frowned upon or easily forgotten and Jolt was one of those forgotten concepts. Outside of that we've seen him in a few of the comics but that was about it. It would take over a decade for him to make his official on screen debut as a minicon in the Transformers Armada series. Except this time around he would be switched over to the Autobot team and serve as Hotshot's partner. Although he was a bot of a few words he still had more to do like constantly assisting Hot Rod during epic battles. The little guy even became a reoccurring character in a sequel series called Transformer Cybertron. And this is just my opinion but I think this version of Joe is more known than any other iteration of the character including the cinematic counterpart. Just what exactly happened to movie Jolt? If you ask me he has so much potential. I mean look at the guy he's a cool looking robot armed with these electric whips. He should have easily stolen the show but he was nothing more than a walking jumper cable. It's almost as if Bay and the story writers didn't know how to choreograph a good action sequence for him but there have been multiple showcases how his skill set could have worked on the big screen. Joke could have been what Whiplash was to Tony Stark in Iron Man 2. Hell he could have even been what Django was to the Brittle Brothers. I like the way you die, boy. I'm just saying. There was just so much wasted potential with this guy. But let's get back on topic with this design. According to TransformersFandom.com, aka Teletran 1, he has a fondness of Earth's nature and a habit of saving energy, explaining why he chose an eco-friendly car as his disguise. If this is true, then it's a cool idea that would have translated so well to the big screen, because we don't really have that many Autobots who genuinely enjoy nature in the live action movies. He transforms into a Chevy Volt, a vehicle that can be recharged from an external source of electricity. Many sources suspect that Jolt's name was used because of how similar it sounds to the Chevy Volt as they both rhyme. So a lot of these concepts seem like the perfect mix for the character. We have a tree hugging Autobot who chose an eco friendly alt mode to preserve his energy for when he really needs to whip some Decepticons. Could you just imagine how widely received he could have been among the fans? I mean you can say whatever you want about the small screen time sideswipe got in TF2 but when he made his first appearance G1 fans and newcomers instantly grew to love that version of the character even more. They loved him so much to the point to where he was the only second wave character to get a reoccurring role in the third movie. Our boy Joke could have really used some of that shine to garner more fans. But anyways let's go a little deeper into who this version of the character is and how he was conceptualized. This time around we're going to use one of the more reliable fan sites, tfwiki.net. I usually go to this site to make sure I have the right stats and references for the characters. Along with that info they usually give you a brief description of what the characters are like if you want to know more about them. So let's read what kind of personality our boy Jolt has. It says Jolt has a tendency towards making mischief. 
Like any prankster, he's pretty impulsive, and if trouble rears his head, you can bet Joe is going to try to jump in the middle of it, though he more than often ends behind it, mostly out of focus, as luck would turn out. Luckily, he's got the fighting ability to make sure his head stays on his shoulders, utilizing his electric whips in battle. He loves to act crazy in battle. It disorients and confuses the Decepticon, drawing them in close so he can whip them. Where the hell was any of this in the movie? Where's this impulsive prankster that loves being in the middle of trouble? If he loves being in the middle of stuff, then where was he when the Autobots showed up to retrieve Optimus after he was killed by Megatron? That sounds like the perfect scenario to be in the middle of anything, but he's nowhere to be found. He was probably somewhere getting a good USB charge. Wherever he was, he should have been present in the shootout against the Decepticons. Like, I can only highlight one moment where we see this Cybertronian energy drink in action. If you blink, you might miss it, but if you look closely, he can be seen shooting at Decepticons with Ratchet and Sideswipe during the big battle in Egypt. You can briefly hear what his blasters sound like, too. But he's so far to the right of the screen, you can barely see what he's hitting or what it looks like when the electric blast hits his targets. Talk about a waste of three seconds. Apparently, the reason why this character's screen time was so minimal was because he was added at the last minute. And no pun intended here, but this really doesn't come as a shock to me. Since there was this big writer strike from the Director's Guild going on, I can imagine that TF2's production went through hell. And for the longest time, I thought that was what stopped the film from being as good as the first one. But we all see that that wasn't necessarily the case since the pay films got progressively worse with each entry. But I digress. According to notes from the TF Wiki site, the writers had to convince Bay that Jolt would feel like a true member of the main Autobot roster. Ultimately, this wasn't what you could call a success. Jolt only appeared in robot mode in three scenes of the movie, and the character has no lines whatsoever. He even abruptly disappears from the Autobot vehicle mode group shot where he appears for the first time. He does get a name shout out, which is something at least, but that doesn't change the fact that he was so disposable to the plot that he didn't appear in any tie-in comics, books, or video games until seven months after the film came out. Did you hear that people? Only three scenes in the movie and it took seven months after the film to release for him to show up in any of the tie-in comics. They couldn't even put this fool in a video game. Which is a surprise because game developers usually have more leg room when it comes to giving characters a decent spot on the roster. I find it funny that Long Haul, a throwaway Combaticon, was featured as a playable character in the Revenge of the Fallen game, but they couldn't even bother to put Joe as one. But then again, this could have been due to Joe's late addition into the films. The devs probably got an early version of the movie's concepts and Joe was never to be found in them. Speaking of concepts, TF Wiki mentions that none of Joe's toy and comic book appearances were accurate to his CG model. Closer inspection of his head reveals that the final design was far less shrimpy than the concept art Hasbro used. During production of Revenge of the Fallen, Takaro told me were informed that Joe had been dropped from the movie, so product development on him was halted. However, when they saw a photo of Joe on the set, they realized that contrary to what they had been told, he was still in the movie and hurriedly went back to work on his toys. And man do I find this hilarious because until this very day out of all the concept arts, jokes are the hardest ones to find. The ones that we do come across are in awkward angles like this one, and we also have other concepts like this which are completely different from the final design. I'm not 100% correct on this, but I don't think there's an actual concept of the final look for the character outside of this image. And this isn't even a good image. It's kind of sad when you think about it, because Hasbro had the current Marvel Studios visual development doing the design for this guy, but they barely did anything with him. But finishing things off, TF Wiki says that although Joe never speaks in the movie, Variety had reported and it was believed for a while that Anthony Anderson was the voice to the late joining Autobot. Some scenes of Joe in vehicle mode in Jordan were shot, but never appeared in the movie. On August 2nd, 2010, Nelson Lauren, the webmaster of Michael Bay's official website, declared on the message boards of TFW 2005 that there will be no Joe for Dark of the Moon. Hence, in the IDW's Dark of the Moon prequel, Joe goes bye-bye. And I just want to go ahead and say no, Jolt didn't die at the hands of Cemetery Wind like everybody says for every bot that mysteriously vanishes. Hell, Cemetery Wind wasn't even a thing until TF4. It's not explained in the movie, but Jolt was actually killed at the hands of Shockwave in issue 4 of the Rising Storm comics. So there you go. As far as his supposed voice actor is concerned, I think it would have been amazing if Anthony Anderson would have voiced Jolt. If this robot was said to be an impulsive prankster like TF Wiki made him out to be, then it would have been a match made in heaven, because Anthony Anderson is known for playing these boisterous characters, and it would have been nice to have another brother bot like we had with Jazz. I'm just saying. But nonetheless, this has been an interesting case study. It's a reminder that we should always look back at some of the characters who had untapped potential but went by overlooked. 
The same can be said for your personal accounts, because your online security is something that you may have overlooked. It's something that we take for granted on a daily basis because we aren't aware of how high of a risk we are at getting hacked. Thankfully, Dashlane is here to remind you of those things. If you're watching this video through a Google account, chances are you do most of your activities online. Whether it be streaming, making purchases, among many other things, it's become like a godsend. But every good thing comes at a price, like your personal information. If you're using the same password over and over, you're potentially creating a digital trail for hackers to compromise all of your accounts. This is why Dashlane does the job of keeping your passwords backed up and ready to access on every device you own. Instead of struggling to memorize all of your passwords, Dashlane stores and autofills them for you, so you won't have to worry about forgetting any of them like many fans have forgotten about Jolt. By using their top of the line security, your passwords can easily be updated. So to make sure your accounts are safe, sign up for Dashlane Premium by simply going to www dashlane.com slash rbg you get a 30 day free trial or you can use the promo code as seen on the video to get 10% off of a Dashlane premium. The links can also be found in the description box below. So head on over there now if you haven't already. But anyways guys, what do you think about the forgotten Autobot known as Jolt? Do you feel like he was underserved? And who else do you feel has gone overlooked in the movies? Let me know down in the comments below. As always, I ask that you like or dislike the video. It doesn't have to be a thumbs up, it can be a thumbs down. Any feedback is good feedback and will only help me improve on my channel. But if you really enjoyed the video, it would help me out tremendously if you shared it on social media outlets with all your friends and followers. Sharing really makes a difference. But this is your boy RBG signing out on another Transformers video. I'll catch you guys later. Peace out.